Imagine a circle. Imagine 12 points on that circle. You unlock this circle with the keys of your imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound, of emotion, of, of, of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of feelings and ideas. You've just waded into the sonic deep. We hope you enjoy your stay. Here's your host, Mr. And Lou. Yeah. This is the Sonic Deep, and I am your host, Mr. And Lou, and I am joined by the marvelous Mr. Alex Sioris, human genius, genius in human form. And as always, we are gathered here to discuss the ins and outs and the intricacies of the little game we play with the number 12 that we mistakenly call music. Good afternoon, Alex. How are you? Good afternoon, Jason. Very, very nice. Thank you once again for um, this beautiful gathering. Thank you for coming. Um, We're going to have a lot of fun uh, with some uh, um, thoughts about the 12. Indeed, indeed we are. So uh, I have had an excellent uh, week of playing with numbers and uh, trifoni, and I've figured out and got up on my site a select number of very important trifonis. And uh, I, I, did you get a chance to look at that, the new revised version, the pared down version? If you didn't, that's okay. <laughs> Due to my uh, overburdened uh, schedule. <laughs> At, at, at any rate, uh, it is fascinating and fun to play with these numbers, and I want everybody to be able to do that, so that's why we're going to talk more about the number 12 and how it relates to music, and, and uh, the asymmetries, and the symmetries, and the different shapes we find that we play with all the time in here, and what's dancing around in our head. So tell us, Alex, take us there. What do you want to talk there about today? it goes once again. Uh, first, would like to say, everybody, welcome to this uh, conversation. It is something that uh, I always wanted to do, and something that has impressed a lot of people in my life. So, um, I'm almost uh, certain that if you give a little bit of attention, you're going to be very happy with uh, what uh, a commentary can do for you. So there it goes. We were talking um, the last uh, couple of shows how our mind is impressed through the different mathematics within the number 12. And I pointed out last uh, uh, last show that uh, when you cut the sound in half, when you cut the sound in three pieces, when you cut the sound in four pieces, six pieces, eight pieces, pieces which we didn't do last week and of course 12 pieces every time you divide 12 in an even manner you divide it by 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12 it's going to bring what everybody calls dissonance it's that simple that every time I mention it I feel that everybody should know it, but yet there is no school in the world that teaches what I just said. So I'm going to repeat it. When the sound that is the number 12 is divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12, it sounds bad. The divided by 12 brings monotony. 12 divided by 12 brings one note. There is one note. Divide 12 by 2. Bring six. Divide 12 by three, brings four. Divide 12 by four, brings three. Divide 12 by two, it brings, by six, it brings two. I know what you're gonna think, <laughs> but we're not gonna talk about it. So, what is left for people to have fun with? There are two very simple numbers, which is five and seven. And what is the five? Just if you have a piano or anybody has 
cannot access a picture of a keyboard, you find out that the keyboard is nothing but five black keys and seven white keys. It doesn't matter what key you're playing, as you call them, keys. Those plastic things, anyway. You will notice that there are five black ones and seven white ones. Now, how did we end up calling the seven an octave and ignore the five beats me up to this day. Well, like I told you, I've lived long enough. I had enough of summers in my life. They were all summers, never winters. So I was telling you, the number five translates to all of us with a simple word that's called pentatonic in Greek. Pede toni. En, dio, tria, tessera, pede. En, dio, tria, tessera, pede. And so on. Now, what happens with the rest of them? The rest of them are seven. Well, in Greek, seven is epta. En, dio, tria, tessera, pede, excepta. En, dio, tria, tessera, pede, excepta. And it goes on. So, seven plus five, come on, guys, twelve. So if you ever wanted to understand music, you have to know that the only number to start with is 12. Now, where are the 12? Here they are. There's the 12, again. And it goes forever. It goes up. Now, remember the guitar is three and a half dozens long. So if you start from the very low part of the guitar, you want to know how many dozens you have? Very easy. First one. Second. Third. And half. And it stops because then we fall in the hole. <laughs> Do you know that? The guitar is a hole. Whoever goes past the three and a half dozens don't call them octaves, guys. You're going to pay for it. Not to me. <laughs> so look what happens now. We have five and seven. Why does the mind, minds thinking of evenness within 12? An ecometric suggestion, because I can tell you what I feel I know, but overall, you know, I might be mistaken. But an ecometric suggestion is that the sound, when it's evenly divided, bores our beautiful, very fast, ultra smart computer, which is in here. We all have it, guys. There are no smart and dumb people on this earth. We're all the same. We bear the same capacity, the same computer, but some of us don't think too long. That's not because we cannot. It's because we choose to do other things that are a little bit more fun. For me, a commentary is fun. Makes me think. And what do I think? Funny little things like, how many different fives and how many different sevens can I find now and have fun? One of them is what we all do. Now, this is a different one. one. I'll play another one. See? I'm going to play another one. See? To make a long story short, there's about a hundred of them. They all have a different structure. There are five within twelve, but they occupy different numbers. So, what is the difference? Different phone number. You dial for the pentatonic that everybody knows. It is 146811. 146811. It is here. Let me see where it is. There it is. One. Four. Six. Eight. Eleven. One. Four, six, eight, eleven, back to one. And it sounds like this. We did that a lot. Now let's see how many other pentatonics are right here in front of our eyes so that we get an idea what is the number seven or the number five.
So we just did one of the fives. Let's do the next one. We just did this. We're going to do the major pentatonic, as we call it. The major pentatonic is right here. Obviously, now we have to calculate a new number. Can you please tell me, Mr. Jason, what number would that be? One. One. Three. Five. Eight. Ten. That's it. One, three, five, eight, ten. Look what it sounds like. That's the happy one. Now before we had one, four, six, eight, eleven. Now we have one, three, five, eight, ten. By changing the location of those numbers, our mind calculates the new phone number of that pentatonic. How hard can that be? It's not. It's just that nobody ever said, and on the guitar, there is beautiful little numbers that you can choose. And when you choose those numbers, your mind responds. And that's all music is. Right. Did you hear the word note yet from me? I mean, musical note? No. Did I tell you about Vatican and the Pope? <laughs> yeah, and I think the, we did talk about that. Do that. Do. Okay. <laughs> How about the limping alphabet? I think I'm going to repeat that to everybody who's listening. When you take this beautiful code that we use, and we call it alphabet, and it has 26 letters, and you fire, you throw in the garbage, you, you get away 19 of them, you're left with seven. Good luck. Now try to make a civilized society. Try to talk to each other. Come on, guys. You have seven letters there. there. You know, seven out of 26 means that your mind will never learn music. So give it up. Don't give it up today. Give it up yesterday. Yeah, it's and it's totally not related to anything that has seven letters has nothing to do with uh, really what music is. Well, the only good thing about the seven letter is the number seven. That's right. about it. But sadly, they don't even tell you that. They tell you they're eight. Right. And of course, they call to think it an octave. Eight. So as you'll find, if, if I was to have a big name signed somewhere on my, on my forehead here, it says, please, don't bring the octave in the conversation. It just doesn't exist. So seven or five. We just did the second five. Let's do the third five and find out why does this have a double name here. This one says it's a pentatonic. Why is it pentatonic? N, V, three, tessera, pende. Because there are five. Now this one has the number. One, three, six, eight, eleven. Look what it sounds like. Different. Let's go to the next one. One, four, six, nine, eleven. called the hypolocrian. It happens to live right under the locrian mode. Which one is the locrian mode? The blue Here guy. Okay. Yes? Yes, the blue guy yeah. right there. For my, my, from my tear, it kind of, it's kind sure. of shiny. <laughs> so here we go for the next one. What does it say here? One, three, six, eight, ten. Beautiful. This is the last one, as you notice, because after that we'll go back to the pentatonic man. This one sounds like this. One. These are the five pentatonics that are living within the major scale, as you call it, within the happy seven. What name did I give them? One, three, five, six, eight, and twelve. When you play the happy mode, there is your happy mode right there. One, three, five, six. 8, 10, 12, 1. You just saw what your mind loves to hear all the time. And of course, it sounds like this. Now, we played the first out of the seven modes, and we call it a major mode. It's called also Ionian for the reasons we mentioned last week. 
Well, we go now to the next mode that is called Dorian. That has a different phone number. One, three, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Sounds like this. The next one is called Phrygian. Has a different phone number. One, two, four, six, eight, nine, eleven. The next one is Lydian. One, three, five, seven, eight, ten, twelve. Next one is called Mixolydian. One, three, five, six, eight, ten, eleven. The next one is called Aeolian. You also call it natural, minor, or relative minor. It has the number one, three, four, six, eight, nine, eleven. The next one is called Locrian, and it's the only blue one, which means it's the only one that will sound kind of different than the others. And then phone number one two four six seven nine eleven. Pretty. Huh? So these are the twelve things that will bring you to twelve different states of mind, because our mind loves to calculate those little things. Right. It's very curious, and every time it hears more than two or three notes, it sparks up. Says, I want to know it. But the thing is, unless you know what to expect to learn in music, you'll never learn it. Needless to tell you that this information can never come to you by accident. Right. Sadly, it cannot come through when you go to school. Because in school, they never mention the pentatonics as being the absentees of a major scale. Never they, do they also mention that the major scale is the absentee of a pentatonic scale. Right. By the way, major scale has no number in it. Pentatonic does. So remember, it's the heptatonic has five that are not present. And the pentatonic has seven that are not present. Remember, there are two groups. Again, there is a group within that's called the five. And there, there's another group outside that's called seven. Now, how hard it is to add five and seven and come to 12. Right. Now remember, 12 is impossible for the brain to calculate. There is a very phenomenal uh, figure in the musical uh, school that is called Schoenberg, Arnold Schoenberg. And he suggested that music is 12. Everybody remembers him. Everybody talks about him. He even made pieces of music where you put the 12 notes and they, it would sound pretty much like this. He just used them all. Okay, he used he them all. Threw now, them all in if there. I, di I dare everybody to go on the computer and find a piece of Schoenberg, and you find out that his pieces are not comfortable for the ear. Why? Because he didn't suggest to the audience that, listen, this is not music for the human brain of the year 2013 or yeah. the 1900s when he lived. This is music for the future, wherever the human brain will develop to understand the number 12, because we don't. Right. Now, let me tell you another story, which I did tell you last time, but we didn't talk about. I'd like to tell you about the number seven, how important it is. I'm All right, gonna... let's hold that for right after the break. We'll take our break right now, and then uh, we will come back and, and talk about your story. Uh, Y'all just hang in there. We'll be right back. Hopefully we can get a commercial going here. Hello. Carl Mahoney was born in the wrong era. He should have lived in the 50s alongside Humphrey Bogart and Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> when bona fide stars were elusive, where presidents were worshipped and smoking was still cool. With his camera lens, he was able to capture that old Hollywood charm while smothering it with edge and sex appeal. His photographs tell a story of mystery and misconduct. What's up, bitches? He is... 
most interesting man in the world. His style and versatility makes him a brilliant headshot photographer for actors as well as live music performances. He looks for the essence of the artist and then helps create the atmosphere for them to comfortably live. Mahoney shifts effortlessly from studio to location, to the stage for the live band performances or to the actor's home for headshots with the utmost ease and professionalism, producing images worthy of promoting you, your film, or your band. For questions or to schedule your next photo shoot, visit studiomahoney.com. Ever wanted to know how music really works? Revolutionary musical scientist and mathematician Alex Sioris is breaking new ground with his incredible new insights into music and the way the brain thinks. With colors, shapes, and numbers, Alex has been able to unlock the secrets of music that traditional music theory has shrouded in mystery for hundreds of years. Learn the secrets of chord theory, scales, and so much more in this simple musical circle. Now you can get a glimpse of ecometry in the form of an easy-to-use musical cookbook on your iPhone. Visit iTunes App Store now and do a search for ecometry or visit ecometry.com. E-C-H-O-M-E-T-R-Y dot com. Ecometry, because music theory is a convoluted bitch. And we're back on the Sonic. Alex, you're going to tell us a story about the number seven. Talk to us, my friend. <clears throat> Again, uh, today I'm going to mention something to you that has never been mentioned <clears throat> on any show or in any public forum up to this day. So I'm kind of excited to tell you. When uh, all of us uh, communicate with each other, we use a system that is called Alphabet. Alphabet is a system of 26 characters that our mind spins around with the speed of light, picks from two, or from one, two, listen, seven characters, and makes words. I'm challenging the whole audience, seven billion people out there, to find me one word that is not compound and has more than seven letters. They will have to fight their way through. And it's not going to be a prime language. It will be a computer language or a backwards language. All civilized world uses from one to seven letters, and on the eighth letter, the mind collapses. So what a coincidence. When we play music, our mind collapses on the eighth note. So there is nobody right. out there who will come publicly and challenge me that he knows of a scale with eight notes. And if there is one, here I am. Why don't you show up? Let's talk about it. So listen what happens when we talk. Our mind imagines clusters of, word, of, of letters from one to to average seven. Actually, the average is four and five. Jason is five. Alex is four. Table is five. Water is five. Mom is three. Dad is three. God is three. Eat is three. C is three. Now look why three is important. It's just like God. Three. And even the God's uh, identity is called the Trinity. Right. Why isn't it five or six or seven? <laughs> there wouldn't be that many believers left. <laughs> because the mind thinks in a way that we do not control it. What I did, I just looked inside my mind, and I tried to find out, how do we think? And I found out that when we speak to each other, musically or otherwise, our mind does not exceed the number seven. So welcome to the world, it's to a certain reality that the language that we use when we speak and the language we use when we so-called play, although we don't play, we think really hard, right. is the mind's calculation from one to seven. And that's what I wanted to announce today so that you all feel good. And I'm expecting somebody to pick up the glove I just threw. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I've actually looked that up. I, I've never been able to find uh, a word that wasn't a compound word that had more than seven letters. Okay, but maybe there so, is somebody out there who's maybe a there, yeah. maybe in a special in a specific uh, in a kind of uh, different language. But like I said, yeah. because I command a few languages myself, uh, I I did do a little bit of research because before I came publicly to challenge seven right. million people, right? But I like to tell you, if there is a couple of words, really, the human brain concentrates on the numbers one to seven. Now, one is very simple. That's why we don't have that many words. And that's why only numbers are uh, one character. 
And not all of them. Are. Past nine, the car, the numbers become two characters. Right. Too. Okay. Well, let's go back to music now and the speech. Now, I'd like to tell you one more thing that people do not know, that the, the alphabet that the American uh, uh, language uses is 26 letters, but the alphabet it came from is the Greek language. And we have 24. What happens to be two times 12, which that, happens that to 12 be... 12 in there again which happens to be perfect numbers. 24 is the universal alphabet. 26 it became after it got a little bit molested by the, right. people, the people who took over. And they right. molested it so much that it had two babies. <laughs> so now it has 26. But I, I challenge you to tell me, you see, as a Greek, I know that the alphabet is 24 letters. So the human brain spins around the number 24 creates beautiful little words, and we communicate. So you notice I did well up to this moment. You have understood practically everything that came through my mouth. Right? right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. There goes from one to seven. Now, I would like to point out that the word mum, dad, and God, that are three-lettered, is not an accident. That is where the mind feels comfortable. And that's why a chord has three notes so right. when you guys pick up your instrument and you throw at me those triads you have to know that a triad means three things the word chord does not right the word so chord the g chord the... is the g string yeah. in greek this is chord chordi means one string Polychord, tetrachord, by the way, they have tetrachord in music school. Uh -huh. It means four notes. It doesn't mean four chords, 12. Right. It means no. three plus one, as you notice. So they know that they have messed up the Greek language in that particular art where they teach music to people who do not uh, properly, could not afford to learn their language, baby. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I was telling you about the three. There is three. There is three. There's different three and different three. Or and all kinds of threesomes. So three is the number where our mind feels comfy, creates words and chords. So there is a new theory that we should go after to try to find to connect. Why does our mind, when it comes to sound matters, which is music and speech, uses from one to seven? Yeah, and, and groups things in threes and, and fours, fours and fives. And now fives. listen to this. I will prove to you why the sound is so dissonant through the language. How many times have you heard the word ah, which is a lot of us put together? Right. Or the word, rrr, you don't, yeah, because it's a repeating one of the twenty-four characters. Yeah, you can't do that's that. Why Doesn't it, make any that's sense. That's why in music <laughs> you do not do monotonous <laughs> things, as I was telling right. you last time. So, what is music? Music, the challenge of our brain to calculate the different mathematics within the number twelve. That has never been publicly announced. Everybody keeps talking about that. I would like to say ridiculous without people being offended, but I find it a ridiculous. I just tried to tell you that uh, me as a uh, as a citizen of the world, I'm appalled, I'm absolutely abused by the terminology we have in music today. Yeah, and I'm it, asking it's very you, confusing terminology. A yes, lot of and it. I'm asking misleading. you on behalf of one person who spent all his life. I have spent all my life on this because that's how important it was for me to know what I'm thinking when I play music. And remember, we don't play. We don't play. We think. Right. And when you think, beautiful things will happen. Right. And the same thing when we talk. Remember, we don't use the same letters over and over. We never, I told you last time, we don't say boo, 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 boo. No. It just makes no sense. And when we do, we do it where? To the kids. Why? Because they do not understand. <laughs> right. They only feel the mannerism behind the words. 
You see, and usually they laugh at you because they know how silly but, that by is. By the way, yeah, I'm so, I'm, I'm almost <laughs> sure that the kids maybe they haven't picked up the language yet, but they know exactly they that know, their dad. That's is ridiculous. Silly. <laughs> that is silly, and they say, "Oh man, I was born by the worst <laughs> parents." Oh yeah, <laughs> when, is that my dad? Oh, oh I, be, no. I better go back in there. But anyway, <laughs> okay. So now that we know that music is nothing but a language. Let's portion, let's proportion now the two languages. The speech is 24 or 26, but it's basically two times 12. Right. Now, music is only 12. Now, I'm going to give you one more thought that is it's going to be announced today publicly for the first time. When the speech is 24, it squares to 576. 24 has 24 mirror relationships with the other members of its group. Right. Now, 12 squares to 144. The relationship between 576 and 144 is 4 to 1. The 576 is, contains exactly 4 times 144. Right. That means that the speech is four times slower in our brain than music. That means that music is understood by the brain four times faster than what I'm doing right now. So when I play music like this, what I just did was understood by you and me four times faster than when we speak. That is the reason why there is not two human beings today that can communicate their musical knowledge because they don't slow down four times at least so they can talk about it. Right. So look what happens. Ichometria has a map that is there forever. You can slow down your thoughts now, people, not four times. You can slow it down as many times as you want. And what do you do when you slow down? You say, for example... One, three, five, six, eight. <whistles> Ten, eight, six, five. Put those numbers down. Under the numbers, put those little tails that respond to your rhythmical music writing. And instantly you have a system where you can write music for all your instruments without ever using the word do. Let me fa sol T or A B C D F G in any form, including the flats, the sharps, the double flats, and the double sharps. Because that's all you need to know. You just need to know the number identity of your musical thoughts. If what I said sounded complicated, maybe next time we'll do it slower. But I just announced to you that music is nothing but simple mathematical orders within the number 12 that span from 1 to 7 because our mind is incapable, all of our mind, unless one of you is smart. Yeah, the new, the new generation, come you out, never know. Come out. Whoever is smart can do more than 7, I'm here. Yeah. I'll be impressed. So our mind can do from 1 to 7, and whoever can calculate those simple numbers will become a great echometrist, thus musician, since you like that word so much. Right. Remember, don't Google music. <laughs> Nothing yeah. will happen. Google echometry. Yeah, then you get some actual and information. Go to Jason's uh, website. JaneLu.com. And see what happens when you get to be an echometrist. Wonderful things will happen to your fingers and of course, I would like to announce to you that we're working hard on the book about ecometry. That's going to be a downloadable uh, edition that people will be for a very, very, very small fee. Get a lot, a lot, a lot to know about music. Mm -hmm. So now let's go to the next thing I'd like to talk to you today that is very simple. And it's a little bit of a more clearing up what we did last week. 
Knowing that the sound is the number 12, I'd like to point out to you that the number 12 in this little picture is this beautiful little clock. All I had to do is kill a small clock and steal the numbers from it. <laughs> Because that's it is the same 12, by the way, that you use in every other Dozenic system in your life. So if anybody comes to me and says, come on, man, 12, it's hard. <laughs> I'll say, come on. There is not one single day of our life that we didn't think of 12 because every day has 12 hours. Always. We even bring the 12 with us on our wrist and now on our cell phones because we have to know exactly which part of the 12 our mind is thinking of every day on an everyday basis. And of course, our birthday is one of the 12 months. And I'm not going to go into that humongous, dozenic identity of our thoughts because then you will know that I'm right. Yeah. It's 12 or nothing. Whoever cannot think 12 is not a human being because the human society lives on a daily basis through 12. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. This is the 12. When it grows up a little bit, it grows the size of these four circles. These four circles and the number 12 are identical with the only difference On this particular particular circle, we have pointed out the one, the five, and the eight. Here we have one, four, eight. Here, one, four, seven. And here, one, five, nine. The two lower circles, when the eye sees them, understands them right away. The black, because it's an equilateral triangle, and instantly we know it's a joke to be understood, It's nothing but a triangle that is absolutely even. And the blue, because it's nothing but a square cut in half. Now, I'd like to ask all of you, why don't you try to give me a description of what this and this one is? Um, an asymmetric triangle? Uh, well, yes. Can, do you see now how hard it is to try to describe it to me? Right. While the blue and the black, you can say, well, you took a square, you cut it in half. The black, you took a circle and you found three even points on it. Why didn't you try now to describe me the other two? Uh, it's a triangle and a square cut in okay. half. Okay, in order to describe the other two, your mind has to go into the very simple mathematical mode. And that's what it does when you All listen right. to music. So, here we go. I'm going to do you the green one. It says one, four, eight. And it sounds like this. And you heard an almost good minor arpeggio, you call it. Right. Arpeggio comes from arpazo. In Greek, when you grab things, arpazis. So arpa is the instrument that you play with your fingers. You grab the notes. So I just grab the notes with my mouth, okay? Here we're going to do the next one. One, five, eight. Hmm. As you notice, they're both uneven. Mm -hmm. I hope you notice that this one kind of makes you kind of sad. And that's why you give it the name minor. Because if it made you feel better, you would probably call that major. There's many people who tell me, I, I, I choose the minor over the major. No, you don't, because you will rename it when you do. Right. And, and nobody did it yet. Everybody thinks that this. By the way, both words are nothing but translations of Greek terms One is called mison, which means major, and the other means elason, which means minor. Sadly, those words nobody understands as well as a Greek does, and that I don't, don't say it with an arrogant way. I'm just telling you, to understand those words, you have to go to a school, because they are, they are not the superlatives. What's before the superlative? It's, you know, the... the uh, English? In no, English. I don't, I, well, yeah, it's, it's English good, grammatics better, it's I'm good, bad at. <laughs> it's good, better, best, okay? Right, right. Okay, so, mizun means that it's bigger, it's happier than average, and the last one means that it's sadder than average. Now, let me tell you what happens with the other two. This one, we call it, it first it sounds like this, Uh, 
and you call it a fully diminished arpeggio. As you notice, being symmetric, it has a very non-entertaining sound. And the, pr the proof is that you have never used it on any love song yet. Neither have you used it on any ballad yet. Right. But the classical uh, you know, uh, composers use it here and there to create a little bit of suspense because those things sound so terrible that you cannot put them for much longer than a few moments in a musical piece. Now, right. the last one sounds like this. Huh. That one is called augmented. Now, the names are all ridiculously misleading because to augment or diminish something, first you have to know what it was before you attempted the augmentation right. or the diminution. Where I come from, the things that are augmented are things that we can see. <sighs> so when you see a nice pair that have been augmented, you know, you call them augmented. <laughs> <laughs> when you see and when you feel a when you feel a pain that is diminished, you say my pain has been diminished. <laughs> okay. So look what happens. So let's all get along and agree that you cannot take beautiful mathematics and call them names that do not respond to any kind of logical term. So here we have it. All right. So let's let's agree on that and then we'll come back right after this commercial and talk more about it. All right. There we go. Ever wanted to know how music really works? Revolutionary musical scientist and mathematician Alex Sioris is breaking new ground with his incredible new insights into music and the way the brain thinks. With colors, shapes, and numbers, Alex has been able to unlock the secrets of music that traditional music theory has shrouded in mystery for hundreds of years. Learn the secrets of chord theory, scales, and so much more in this simple musical circle. Now you can get a glimpse of ecometry in the form of an easy-to-use musical cookbook on your iPhone. Visit iTunes App Store now and do a search for ecometry or visit ecometry.com. E-C-H-O-M-E-T-R-Y dot com. Ecometry, because music theory is a convoluted bitch. Are you a slave to your garden? Want to be able to remotely monitor and manage your grow? At SG Sensors, we have developed the technology to do just that. The SG Sensors Smarter Control System allows you to endlessly expand your setup with sensors from CO2 monitoring, soil sensors, dosing and flotation sensors. We offer complete remote growing at a fair price. For more information, visit us online at sgsensors.com. We want you to take the shows with you, so subscribe to our podcast at iTunes or tune in live every Friday from your desktop or your internet-ready mobile device and listen live. Excellent radio. And we are back. Uh, and yes, the fabulous Sonic D here with Alex Sioris. I am your host, Mr. Andrew. Uh, we just got about uh, 17 minutes left of the program, and uh, we're talking about, let's have a little bit of, let's make a little bit of sense, be a little bit logical about the way we name things, and instead of being so haphazard and, and, and make these, the, why do we name things things that aren't related to them? I mean, that makes no sense. The reason uh, that we do, not have, we do not have a system in music that makes sense it's because the people that um, originated the musical thoughts of this generation are not around anymore. Uh, when music was, uh, let's say, translated into an octave, the instrument they were playing those days did not have the pentatonics on it. It only had the heptatonic scale. So you notice huh. when you do play the seven notes out of 12, a, I'll give you a little bit of an example now. I'm going to pick up the guitar. Look what happens when you play 7 out of 12. And this is what my life used to be, the good old days, when <coughs> when men were men. No, when musicians were <laughs> When men were men and furry little <laughs> creatures from Alpha Centauri were furry little creatures from Alpha Centauri. Go ahead. Listen to this now. I'm going to play you 7, and you'll see that it, it almost stays out there. Look. Is a seven. So what they do? They add the eighth. 
for a simple reason. The number seven, it not, it's nothing but the number 12. It's a blue note. Look. This is what your mind tries to understand. It's a terrible sound. So it wants to go back to one because one is so happy. Look. Happy, melancholic, melancholic, happy, happy, mel melancholic, very sad. That's what the blue note suggests. This is the first note, the third, the fifth, the sixth, the eighth, the tenth. Look at the twelfth. Terrible. And because it's terrible, the mind says, get away from it. So it gives you the beginning again, not the eighth note. But they didn't know they called this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, sadly, I was not there. How could I be? I would have been now 1,500 years old, maybe 2,000 right. years old. Couldn't happen. Yeah. But look what happens now. Now, when the black notes were found, remember that story about the basement and all that? When they found that the notes were not really seven or eight, but they had five sisters that they couldn't locate, when they found them... They threw them on top of the white notes on the piano. That's why your piano, when you look at it, it has a problem. It is a piano that has racism on it. There is seven white, fat, beautiful notes and five ugly little ones that are between them. Right. But that's not what music is, right? Right. And and you know what? Here's here's another thing that I was I was thinking about uh, last week was. Uh, the really what the biggest problem with music theory is that music theory is literally taking the this one circle, this one hilas circle, elas, elas. That's it. This one circle, the traditional major scale, and then we're basing all of music theory yes. on that one scale. In fact, just that one scale. Really is what all of music theory is can, based on. Can, can I surprise you now to see? I'm gonna I'm gonna do something bold. I'm gonna get up and turn that thing around, and look what's gonna happen. Oh yeah, this is bold. And one of my one of the this is where music theory just doesn't even compare to the things that uh, echometry can really do. Now we're going outside of the traditional music it's theory. Called the harmonic minor scale. And if I can get my kit, okay. Oh, there we go. This is the harmonic minor scale. And you're looking at it. Let's see. Hmm. Here it is. And I will explain it to you. It's a little bit backwards because usually we turn this around to expose it to the people. But you understand that now we have 1, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 12. You notice by changing the order of things. Let me play, play the scale what it used to be before. If we were to play a minor scale from the from the Elas sound point, it will sound like this. One, three, four, six, eight, nine, eleven, one. Now it's gonna play you what the harmonic minor scale is. This scale has sounds like this in it. Or this one. Or this one. And this one. Or this one. And as you see, it doesn't sound like... Listen to this. Or by changing the mathematics, by changing the order of those seven out of twelve, your mind calculates a different culture, things of Arabic nomads yeah. or Greeks up on the mountains getting married. Of different cultures around the world. world. And all it yeah. is, it's just a tiny little misprint of what you call the classical music. Yeah. It's nothing but a hoax. It's just a little mind game. So please listen to me. 
it's a mind game. And as a mind game, you have to learn what it is that pleases us. What pleases us are those beautiful four triangles that I have here. So we're going to go back to the triangles. And we're not going to sidetrack because we don't have too many, too many minutes. How no, many minutes? We, got, uh, we got about 10 minutes left. Now, check this out. So I was telling you, the sound is nothing but portions of the number 12. The number 3 is the beginning of the human intelligence. When the human brain starts calculating 3, it feels thrilled. It feels wise. feels smart and says, I can do that. So when three are in the air, they cannot be symmetric because the mind then cannot choose one of the three to put the king, the queen, and the slave. It has to be three. It has to calculate some kind of order. So when you look at the black one, there is no order, no matter how you put it. Look, it looks the same. You look at the blue one. The blue one, although it has a little bit of it, a little more, more interesting because you see kind of it's half of something. But even that one is very fastly, very fast we understand it. So we're left now with the other two. So we have a red and a green. And the red sounds good. And the green sounds not so good. So today, and for the first time, universally, I'd like to announce to you what happens to the human brain and why we choose the red over the green, which I didn't do the first show because I wanted to keep you up interested right so look what happens now i will give you simple mathematics and i will do it twice just in case you missed it the first time one two three four one two three four one two three four three times four twelve very simple easy understood the brain says get over it one two three one two three one two three one, two, three. Four times three, the opposite of three times four. The mind says, get lost. We, we did that backwards. Why do you bring it now backwards? It's not convinced, guys, because three times four or four times three is a joke for the brain. Therefore, whenever you play an augmented or fully diminished chord, don't try to impress anyone with that. Of course you can bring it, but really fast. Because the audience, you cannot fool nobody with evenness within 12. Now, let's see when, now, this is the final and the best part of this show. Why is the minor less impressive than the major? As you notice, in simple English terms, symmetry is what offends our brain. The symmetry of 3 times 4 and the symmetry of 4 times 3 offends our brain. This brain says, no, thank you, go home. So look how symmetric the minor chord is. It looks uneven, but look what the even part of it is. It's made out of three portions. The first portion says one, two, three. The second portion says one, two, three, four. The third says one, two, three, four, five. Three plus four, seven, plus five, twelve. Three, four, five bears a sequence. It's not, it's a hidden se sequence. When you look at it, but not when you hear it, the brain is fast. Instantly understands that you're trying to tease it by growing by one sound. Three right. plus one, four plus one, bigger. five. And then the mind says six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 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 they, the, the machine says, don't do that. It's too common. And they right. might steal your phone and yeah. be able to find the code. So you see, simplicity is not what the brain wants in music. So the minor chord, you have to rename it to sequential asymmetry versus Sequential symmetry, the ones at the bottom. And now let me tell you the name of the major one, the one that you love. Remember, 444, four, four, symmetric. 333, three, 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 symmetric. 345, symmetric. Look at the, at the last one. 435, 4 minus 1 plus 2. Try to calculate that one, folks. 
You see, minus one plus two, it still brings you plus one, just like the minor. The minor suggests plus one plus one, three plus one, four plus one, five plus one, five, blah, 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 all the way. Right. The minor says, the major says, I'm sorry, four minus one, three plus two, five. Now, that is something that the mind cannot do. The one step ahead, what is, four ahead, three back, plus five, th that's what it would be. Try to walk on the floor and do four steps ahead, three backwards, and then five ahead. You're going to find yourself one step ahead of the where you were, but that's not what the mind will understand in music. So the one that the world never gets creates excitement in the brain being so unusual. The brain loves it, gets, gets hooked on it. So for the rest of your life, all 7 billion of you out there, I'd like you to remember from Alex and Ecometry. And when you do this, it's the minus 1 plus 2, the 4, 3, 5, that equals 12, that is not 3, 4, 5, that is not 4, 4, 4, that is not 3, 3, 3, 3, but is 4, 3, 5. So, major is the quest for the unknown. The things we do not understand become interesting in music. If you would like to be successful as a noisemaker, as an ecometrist, as a musician, remember, it's the things that the mind will not understand that you have to learn. And in that department, I have a very good program for you that is about to be happening on your computer screen soon. I have for you 240 different scales. 140 of them are heptatonics. 100 of them are pentatonics. I have 36 tetraphonies. I have eight triphonies that you have to study before anyone, anyone can go publicly and say, I understand the sound. Sadly, you will never learn music unless you become an ecometrist, unless you measure the sound that you're trying to project for your audience, you will always be a sad noise maker. Yeah, and even even still, I, with all my studying, I still feel like a sad noise maker. <laughs> I, the, the ocean of ecometry is so deep that it's it's really it's really hard to uh, it's hard to learn it all. Uh, you kind of do the break it down into some simpler parts and make it a lot easier. So um, that's the positive thing. I'd like to tell you one last thing. Okay, we have two minutes left, so go right ahead. I know that whoever listens to me right now senses a little bit of arrogance from me. It is directed to all the people that hurt me for all the 60 years of my life that I've been true to myself, and I'm trying to describe music to my students and my, all the friends I have around the world, there has been a few people that have been absolutely denying the logic of a commentary. And that's where the arrogance comes from. Otherwise, I love you people, and I want all of us to musically get along. And if you like to get along with music, please remember, it's the number 12. Yep. And, and, you know, I, I had a conversation uh, just the just last week with a gentleman who's a great musician, uh, very smart, very intelligent, and still, it, it, he literally got offended by the logical process that is ecometry. And I think they do, people do feel personally attacked. At the same time, he couldn't, he couldn't back up anything that he was saying with, with music theory. He can't deny... That, that this ecometry is a better system, but at the same time won't admit to it. <laughs> Doesn't want to admit to it. I would like That's to tradition, hear... Tradition dies hard. I'm, I'm challenging the whole world to give me their view why major sounds better than minor. Yep. I already exposed to you mine. 
It's 40 years it took me to come to these conclusions. I'd like to hear yours. So you can uh, get in touch with me uh, or uh, Alex. Go to jandlu.com, J-A-A-N-D-L-U.com, or just look up Ecometry, E-C-H-O-M-E-T-R-Y. We'll be back next week. Thank you for joining us on The Sonic Deep. Until next week, stay tuned for Music Research next on Excite.